What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Wednesday, October 30th, 2019. One day from the best day of the year. My name's Greg Miller, and this is the Rogue One, Gary Widow. Good morning. We're a little bit late this morning. What's well, up you with were that? telling us such fascinating stories that was not the re- That you're was not the reason why we were late. Weird ass Game Boy, the Jared over the play, here. The play date. Oh, yeah, yeah exactly. as, as we're now calling it, the Jared. And you and, uh, of course, I was on vacation. You and Kevin were cashing me up on the Game Boy that's doing the high end Game Boy games. Oh, that's right, because you weren't here. I've been, I've been, I've been, yeah, was it, uh, Kevin, was it Imran that was on? And Kevin's like, what, what, what? I, uh, I'm not when we, when, we ha- when that ridiculous $200 Game Boy was on here, I, I signed up wrong. for. Tell that was me and Imran, wasn't I, it? That sounds right. I think I was here. I think I've like, only I hosted with shocked. Imran lately. Yeah. I haven't hosted with anyone else other than you, only Imran. It's because we're the best. It's nice I mean? to have you back. It's good to be here, And buddy. this is the last, well, I guess, one more time tomorrow one you get to time. wear well, this. Well, no. Well, if everything goes right, I'm going to be in costume tomorrow. Oh, really? Uh, Are you yeah, gonna, yeah. Is that a secret? Or it can is you, a secret. Okay. Is, I'll just say tomorrow is in your hands. Um, the and then you started talking about you pre-ordered those uh, fancy AirPods. Yeah, just uh, your dog ate your they're, other they're right. So I got I got AirPods when they first came out, mm-hmm. um, and I and I quite liked them. And then my dog, got, I don't even know how this happened, but my, I one day I go into my office and one of my AirPods is on the floor. Yeah, and it's I had the the shit chewed out of it, like yeah. it was chewed to bits. Yeah, covered in dog saliva. Yeah, didn't need Sherlock Holmes to crack that one. Yeah, of course. Yeah, uh, yeah. and of course one AirPod on its own is no good. So like, no. I don't want to just buy a new set. Like at some point Apple will come out with some fancy new ones, and sure. I'll, I'll jump back in then. And they came out with these new ones that have noise canceling. Yeah. And I travel a lot these days. I'm on plane airplanes a lot. You're going and to like, LA. You're working on that DC movie. I've been going to LA. I've been going to what? Well, no, you Star know what? Strangely, everywhere but LA. I've been San Diego, yeah. TwitchCon, sure, uh, uh, Silicon Valley Comic Con uh, down in San Jose, yeah, uh, Seattle for Pax. Uh, PAX. Yeah. And just recently, I just got back from Austin, the Austin Film Festival. Oh, so I've been flying all over the everywhere but LA. Hobnobbing. Yeah, and I yeah. think I might be going to New York next week. Oh really? So I got you know on these working on a play. Well, on these deathly no, there's movies out there as well. Nah. On these on these deathly long, what do you what do you do to amuse yourself on a long plane Switch. ride? Yeah, you play, yeah, just play video yeah, games. Yeah, I did Luigi's Mansion out to uh, Toronto for EGLX, and then I did email on the way back from New Jersey. How's Luigi's Mansion? I've been real hearing good. good things. Yeah, real good. It's yeah. cute. It's delightful. It's a delightful little game. You know what yeah. I mean? Not challenging, but it's fun. Do you want to see? You want to go? Is it is it very much like the 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 original GameCube game? I mean, it's yeah, it's a step up from that for sure. But yeah, yeah but the same vibe. Yeah, exactly same vibe at all. You should play it with your daughter. You yeah, know, I mean, there's co-op in it. She's a little bit. She's a little worried it might be a little bit too scary for her. Oh, it's not. No, no. Okay. The boos are the scariest thing. You know what I mean? Right. And yeah. Guigi. Guigi, I thought I'd hate. Like Guigi a lot. I like the puzzles with him. It's I love. Yeah, you know me. I'm a big Luigi. You love Goo. I'm a. I'm a big Luigi fan. Yeah. I, I'm always been a big Luigi guy. <laughs> when they did that year of Luigi, I've known you. When they did that year, a decade, Lu- Gary, and I would never. You know me. No, really? I'm a big Luigi if, guy. If you play, <laughs> if you play any Mario game with me, Mario Party, Mario Kart, any kind of, I'll always pick Luigi. Mm-hmm. I don't think he gets enough credit. Sure. When they did that year of Luigi, I liked the the effort year that they Luigi. did with year of Luigi, but I don't think they went far they enough. They didn't nail it. No, it felt sure. like paying lip service to Luigi. 100. percent This game's so, great. You should play. It. So when Luigi gets his own game, I like. I like. They at least gave him his own little side franchise. Sure. Sucks he's always terrified in it, but I digress. Let's talk instead about the Call of Duty numbers, how there's Call of Duty controversy, then the PlayStation 4 is now the second best-selling console of all time because this is Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every weekday on a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, be part of the show, patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames. If you can go there you can give us your questions comments concerns everything under the video game sun then tune in to watch us live twitch.tv slash kind of funny games if you're watching live you have a special job go to kind of funny.com slash you're wrong tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games roosterteeth.com and listening on podcast services around the globe housekeeping for you Tomorrow is Halloween, and that means it's the Halloween hellscape. The Kind of Funny World Championship is on the line in our first ever pay-per-view. We promised it at, uh, uh, what, January on our Patreon fundraising. It's here. It's Halloween Hellscape. You can watch it live as it, on as a YouTube premiere, youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames at 4 p.m. Pacific tomorrow. Of course, that video will just be up then forever on YouTube, though, so you can watch it at your leisure. See who wins the Kind of Funny World title. Will you all be in costume? There's many a costume in that as well. Right. Yeah, you would have known if you hadn't walked out on it. Oh, well, that was that was a different thing, wasn't it? That's this. We taped oh, that it you recorded it. it. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. it's not live. All right. No, no, no. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I could. Oh, that's right. I could have been a part of that. Yeah, you fucked. Yeah, us I good. was too busy. Yeah, this is why you'll never get to compete for the championship again. 
Extra Life is Saturday. That's right. This Saturday, 24 hours of games for charity. You can join our team at kindoffunny.com slash extra life. On the day, you can go there to donate. Of course, you can watch live twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. We'll begin hosting the kind of uh, extra life, uh, kind of funny team, extra life, whatever you want to call it, the extra life team, uh, community streams right after uh, kind of funny games daily on, no. What do we, what? The screencast is Friday. No. Terminator and Reviews Friday. Right after Terminator and Review on Friday. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games for a weekend of people playing games to help the big. Now, I noticed that I haven't been invited to that. Uh, Joey and I are finally planning it today. So, do you want to come by? Maybe. It's nice to be invited. It's nice to be wanted. You're always wanted, Gary. It's I, an open invitation. I, I, you know, you know I, mean? I have a rule. I don't show up at someone's door you bitched without an invitation. You about not competing for the championship. I invited you to compete you invited, for the championship. No, you invited me to be a, to be a commentator. You uh, asked me to uh, wear a suit. I thought you wanted me there as like a color man or like a hype man. Hey, you know what? The commentators who ended up commentating for it, they ended up participating. All right? they, I mean, they, there's no point in me commenting. I'm not good enough at video games. So I'm just going to embarrass myself. Oh, sure, yeah. I, I'm, better on, I'm better on the sidelines. On. Thank you to our Patreon producers, Blackjack and Mohammed Mohammed. Today, we're brought to you by Escape the Invasion and Quip, but I'll tell you about that later for now let's begin the show with what is and forever will be the roper report <laughs> time for some news. What, was that? what was that it's low key it's low key kevin, kevin's given 15 percent over there five stories on low the roper energy report. kevin over there yeah, it's like a baker's dozen it is like a baker's dozen kevin <laughs> number one on the roper report it turns out people are were and are really excited for call of duty modern warfare uh they report activision's call of duty modern warfare had more than 600 million dollars in sell through worldwide in its first three days of release the title has sold more units in its first three days than any other Call of Duty game sold in its first three days in this console generation and is the top-selling new premium game release of 2019. Modern Warfare also established a new record as the number one top-selling digital opening in Activision history. With its blockbuster launch in its first three days of release, Call of Duty Modern Warfare more than doubled the box office opening of Joker. What a ra- like out of out of the blue. All right, cool. We're giving you good numbers about video games. Then just pop. <laughs> Let's just sock the biggest movie in it just to try to make a point. Well, like, I mean, I it, it's, it. it's it's nice to put it into some context. I get it. Your game costs sixty dollars. My Joker ticket costs eleven. But now nah, I digress. Right. So, Ma- like, huh? I, also, I feel like Joker on a way smaller scale. Rated like, R. Well, I guess it, it's it's, I know. it's the biggest rated R movie. But like. You know what I mean? Like, that's yeah. not, like... But isn't it the number one movie in America right now, or am I wrong about that? It, it might be, but it's also, like, October. You know, it's not, like, a good month for number one. Let's we'll see December what the number one movie is. It's just, I mean? funny, yeah, it's just a funny you know, swing of, like, out of the blue. Cats! Pop. Don't rule out cats! Oh, God, <laughs> Definitely rule kidding, out cats! Should we, should, we should go see cats. I'm in. We should go see if on I, opening if day. I get, if I get a screener pass to go see it, you want to come? Yeah. You have to go. Yeah. You have to be on screencast then, though. You got to be on screen. You got to be do on it. screencast. Screen, well, you, you, but you got to flip the S and the T at the end and make it screen cats. Damn. I'm in. Oh my god, that was really good, Gary. That was really, really. Uh, really you got to, you got to, you got to, re, you got to revise that logo, Kevin. I love it. Yeah. Get Andy on it. Get him do it. Get him working <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Have him cancel his work today. Back to the story. Modern Warfare set new records on the PlayStation Network for the highest digital pre-orders and highest three-day digital sales ever on PlayStation 4. Modern Warfare also has become the number one top-selling Call of Duty PC launch ever as opening weekend PC sales on BlizzardBattle.net were significantly up over last year. I'm not kidding. I want to come on screen cats. I know you. I, I didn't right. think. No <laughs> one thought you were you kidding. Lying, <laughs> no one thought you Lock were kidding. I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm going to going out live i can't take it back screenshot this clip it clip it yeah screen when, we get, when we get closer to screen coming cats, everybody screen remind cats. Them. it's happening ah yeah, wow wow <laughs> wow jeez god Corey, you go ahead and get ready on that whenever that uh, modern warfare where you at with it you know i i mean i guess the take you know i have a lot of thoughts on this none of them particularly uh, interesting or salient <laughs> but whatever it's a wednesday um, number one thing I've said if you go back over the years you'll probably find a bunch of clips of me on here and Giant Bomb other outlets that I've been on over the years sure. saying sooner or later Call of Duty fatigue is going to set in the franchise can't go on forever people are going to get bored it, 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 no sign of it right it's it, look, it's, it's bigger than ever yeah, well, is it bigger than ever? That's what I was trying to find. Earlier, I had seen on Twitter somebody doing the comparison of how it all ran down. If you can find that for me, kind of funny dot com slash wrong, so I can bring. I mean, it, up. it I says it, 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 it says the the best selling one of this generation. Of and this we're, generation, and we're, but we're at the end of this generation. Sure, this has been a long generation. But I generation. Do think that, like it's been a, not a rockier thing, but it, it ha- they have lost some momentum as they've gone through in terms of what they are. I mean, is it, it, it if if you think about the franchise across all of the generations, is it 
had is it at its peak now or did it? I, I imagine it probably did peak somewhere back. I would say 360 days is like, like Modern Warfare like, Two. Remember, uh, yeah, somewhere like no, that. No, even before uh, like beyond that, right? But because what do you well, think? Maybe I don't remember. I, I'm not even gonna say what the biggest was. But remember, Call of Duty for me personally in the 360 era is the same way Madden used to be. Remember when it was like Madden Day and that was like an event that Madden was coming out. Oh my God, everybody's so stuck. Call of Duty is the same way and they'd run those trailers with like um, celebrities in them and everybody else yeah. playing them and like they had more money than God and every time it was the biggest entertainment launch of all time. Well, maybe someone, maybe, maybe someone uh, you're wrong can tell us, A, what was the, what's the actual peak, you know, of, of the modern war, 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 warfare franchise kind of economically and how far off that is this? Because maybe it is in decline, I don't know, but they, but I mean... Obviously, this is this is nothing but a positive story for Activision right now. Oh yeah, now. no, I'm not Been taking a long away from what it's doing right here. It's right? obviously sold super duper duper well. Um, I gave this a lot of grief when they first announced it. You know, just redoing Modern Warfare. I'm like, eh, it's kind of like they're, they're officially out of ideas, so they're going to reset the Matrix and hope no one notices. Yeah, let's just go back to the beginning. But I got to say, I'm actually going to be playing this Twitch.tv slash Gary Witter playing Modern Warfare tonight on the stream for the first time. Wow, uh, on PC, ray tracing, ultra settings, all of that stuff. I'm, I, I'm actually, I don't know how this happened, but I've been tuned out of the Call of Duty franchise for years. I didn't play the last, didn't play Black Ops Four, sure. didn't care about whatever the one before that well, it was. Didn't happen, this one, I'm kind. It was real. The fatigue was real. Yeah. I'm interested in this as well. We have a question later on about why. Like, how why many games is this are... one recaptured people's interest? This one's doing something different. I think the hey, we're doing this story, and it's well. First off, there's a Ca the campaign is back. The campaign and the campaign's is back been getting, getting good reviews. Yeah, exactly. It's different and it's grounded and it's this things. There we Do go. Do you think that people are also just happy about like the back to basics, like Infinity Warfare? What it was, it Infinite Warfare or whatever? When yeah, they were going yeah, yeah. to we're space crazy and, and crazy. doing crazy advanced warfare when they were doing crazy, like it was, it was kind of venturing into sci-fi. Almost like Halo territory, and I think people just want their like our contemporary Jack Ryan kind of cutting edge techno thriller stuff, right? They just yeah. want the the modern warfare, and that and Activision's gone back to basics, and maybe that's people are just what they've just wanted all along. Yeah, I think so. I think they wanted to get back to more grounded boots on the ground stuff, and I think the story being interesting is great, and that's it. I think the multiplayer people are going to buy Call of Duty multiplayer no matter what it is, whenever it is. Good news for I mean, good news for people who like because after Black Ops Four came out. And did I don't know how well it did well, and they didn't have a story campaign. I was worried that that might be you know another big story campaign franchise that you know at any time like a big franchise says we're just not going to do story anymore. I feel like that's bad for story and games overall. Uh, but it's back, and Modern Warfare is the most successful Call of Duty of this generation, and people are really praising the story campaign. Maybe this, maybe this is good. This, this is a Turns good thing for people that like story in games. games right? Yeah, because I, yeah, I don't. I, I'm going to try the 32 on 32 ground war thing. Yeah, but I don't have a lot of interest in playing Modern Warfare multiplex. I know I'm just going to get the shit kicked out of me by 12 year olds. Here we go. All right, thank you very much to both the nanobiologist and already? Lord of Pwn for helping out here with what it was. All the right, tweet I was looking for was from Daniel Ahmad, who will show up here later. Obviously, uh, Z Hu G X, who we talk about all the time on the show. Uh, how does this com how does this Call of Duty launch uh, in in compare? In let me try this again. How does this compare to other Call of Duty launches in the first three days, right? Because we already said 600 million sell through in three days, right? right? Here's how it goes Black Ops 4, 500 million. World okay. War II, 500 million. Uh, Infinity Warfare. Oh, that's right. World War II. That was, they did Infinity that. Warfare, shh, never existed. <laughs> was it, was it, was it did, they, did they have a number on it? Uh, is, I don't know if it was, they just never ever put it out. They put okay, the first three it was days. Bad. It was bad, right? Early, right? Uh, Black Ops 3, $550 million. Advanced Warfare, no number for three days. Ghosts, no number for three days. Black Ops 2, 500 million in one day. Wow. Modern Warfare 3, 400 million in one day. Black Ops, 360 million in one day. So, so we don't, why, we don't so have an Black exact line for like, but it sounds like a couple of those one day things, if you extrapolate them out over three days, yeah. probably were bigger than 600. And then Lord of Pwn says, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, the 2011 one, is the all time best selling Call of Duty title at over th 30 million units sold as of February 2019. Right. Uh, so that, that gives you a thing there. But yeah, really. So taking that context that Daniel's giving us, applying it to this, really impressive numbers. Yeah, I mean, so if you million. if you look at that, it's 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 uh, it's right up there with. I I would argue that the franchise is it, if you look at those numbers and kind of draw a little you know line graph. Yeah. It's it's not waning at all. I mean, it's had a couple of yeah. Dips. yeah I mean, they've well, had a couple of missteps like Infinite Warfare. Yeah, yeah. But when they just do when they go back to bases when they do modern warfare. It's it's as popular as it was ten years ago, which is pretty amazing. It's insane, and it's the, and I think it always goes back to as well how 
the jaded gaming Twitter sphere, whatever you want to call it, where we all exist every day, all the day, where the games we care about are the games where like uh, people will poo poo for no reason, right? Oh, another Call of Duty. That just does not matter to the general public. So many more millions of people play video games than people who w listen to this show or go to IGN. Yeah, that it's it up, the, up there with Madden and um, I don't know what else you'd, you'd put in that category, but like it's one of the only truly Assassin's Creed, Assassin's Creed, yeah. Halo. Yeah, I would put up there yeah, as well. Yeah. It's what it's one of the only one of the only AAA franchises that appe like, appeals to the hardcore gamer, but is also truly mainstream. Like everyone plays those games. Yeah. Uh, right now, heads up, Capitalist Pig says, read the Joker top ranking. Maleficent, 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 Mal Maleficent, Maleficent. Uh, Mistress of Evil is currently the number one movie in America. So okay. There you go. But nanobiologist says until as cats. Of, as of today, Joker has the <laughs> highest global to date sales. <laughs> Yeah. Wait till Kitty gets them claws out. <laughs> Wait till Kitty gets them claws out. Now, Gary, you're excited to play Call of Duty as obviously $600 million worth of people are as well, but I have some interesting news for you as our number two story. There's a Call of Duty controversy that I'd heard about but not read into, but I'm going to let James Bachelor tell you about it from Games Industry. This, I mean, again, this does feel like every year, right? Uh, okay, Call of Duty's out. Story number one, it sold squillions of copies. Story number two, there's a controversy. The newest Call of Duty has caused controversy in Russia due Ooh. to a mission that's being criticized for spreading American propaganda. In Soviet Russia... Mon warfare causes no controversy causes you. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Yakov Smirnov, he's topical. <laughs> the mission in question is Modern Warfare's Highway of Death, which sees players taking on a sniper operation overlooking the Titular Road. The game claims Oh, there's it, a sniper. I fucking love sniper missions. It earned its name after Russian forces bombed it during an invasion, killing anyone trying to escape the area. Despite this highway being set in the made-up Middle Eastern country of Yurkistan, Urki, uh, is that Yurkistan or Yurkistan? Yur who cares? And Activision's insistence, the made-up insistence that the story is fictional. Critics has has observed it bears more than a passing resemblance to the real-world Highway of Death, officially known as Highway 80. This six-lane passage passage between Kuwait and Iraq was the setting for the U.S.-led attack during the Persian Gulf War. The coalition attacked retreating forces after a ceasefire, an event later reported as a war crime. Critics and users have accused Activision and Infinity Ward of attempting to rewrite history and describe the game as American propaganda and the de uh, demonization of Russia. The user rating on Metacritic has sunk to 3.4 after a wave of zero-point reviews by people with such complaints, including several in Russian. The BBC even reports the game was discussed on Russian state TV. This controversial mission is likely the reason Sony decided not to sell Modern Warfare through the PlayStation Store in Russia. Developer Infinity War has gone to great lengths in the months running up to launch to distance the game from real-world events. In an interview in August, campaign gameplay director Jacob Minkoff said, quote, We are telling a story that has... We are, are we telling a story? Are we telling a story that has anything to do with the specific governments or of any countries that we we're portraying? No. He later reiterated that Modern Warfare does not comment on the exact administrations and governments and events in our world today, but focuses on thematic things. The backlash occurs almost exactly 10 years after the controversy surrounding Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, which included the, the, the notorious No Russian level that depicted and, enables to, and enabled players to participate in a mass shooting at a Russian airport. The mission proved to be so offensive, the game was recalled from shelves in Russia. Gary Witta, what's your take on this pro-American propaganda whitewashing history? Uh, you know, first of all, again, it wouldn't be a modern warfare release if there wasn't some kind of controversy. It's, it it is almost as though they deliberately, like, they sit around the, you know, the, t the table in the development group and say, well, what, what's going to be the controversial element this year? We better make sure there is one. Like, it, it's, it's part and... I see Kevin's nodding. Didn't they actually do that? I mean, it, yeah, why wouldn't they? Right? Yeah, it's like, what, we, what, like, what, what can we do to make sure it's numbers. controversial? Yeah, they're going to get good numbers. It's a staple like, element of Call of Duty. the news is always a good... Like, yeah? You know, yeah? For, like, these kind of things, I think, like... Like, oh, I don't know if that hurts them, but, like, that spreads their name around for sure, right? I guess my other point is, are we really going to sit here and let Russia... Russia complain to us about um, inaccurate depictions of, of uh, news and historical events? Mm-hmm. Are we, as, 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 they, as they flood the whole fucking planet deliberately with disinformation and fake news, yeah. oh, do they also really get to be snowflakes about, about this? I don't think so. Yeah? You're not going to have it. I'm not having it, Greg. Yeah, exactly. I'm throwing it back in their faces. I understand. And saying, Niet, 
<laughs> that, that translates that translates to them they understand what you're saying there they would they would understand what i'm saying yeah it was interesting to see this uh, i started seeing some tweets about this yesterday not even the, the fact that russian people were mad about it it's just more the fact that like this is a weird thing like this is something but that it's, but the it's, americans did but it's a different okay so they call it is it just because they called it highway of death it's not the same it's a fictional country well, that's not a real what, country. the real world is the highway of death this is Modern Warfare, you know, okay, you're right, no. The mission is, the question is Modern Warfare's highway of death. No, they call it the exact same thing. Right. But it's not, but, it, but it's not, then, they're not saying this, it's not a game set during the, the Gulf War in Kuwait. It's, uh, or it's not, it's, it's not like they're taking that historical event and rewriting that piece of history. Sure, it's, they're it just sounds like the Russians. It sounds like a long stretch of road along which there is some death. But like, what, how, how, is, how is that... How does that get you from from this fictional occurrence in this fictional country to things that happened in the real world like 20 years ago? I don't understand the connection. Well, they're using the exact same name in the exact same circumstances. The highway of death chain- sounds pretty fucking generic to me. <laughs> like, if you said to me, Gary, quickly, we've got all this death happening on this highway in this level. We need a, we need a title now. I don't fucking know. Highway of death? Okay, like, that's not how it happened. Brilliant, Gary. It's clearly that's why, the same that's thing, Gary. The big bucks. It's clearly the same thing. Just, okay, we're going to swap it out. We want to be the good guys in this scenario. Gary, it's definitely the same thing. Is it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So are you okay? All right. Well, I, I need critics to, I, have observed it bears more than a passing resemblance to the real world highway of death. Okay. All right. Okay. Just but but that but that's what modern warfare often does, right? And the pulls Jack, from the headlines, the Jack Ryan show on TV, they all do this. They go rip from the headlines, but then they kind of reskin it, so it's not the exact thing. Yeah. But it's like you go, oh, that's it's kind of like that thing. Yeah. Um, this doesn't bother me. Yeah. It might, I, mean, I mean, with all due respect, I mean, really, I guess what, war's horrible, and I obviously have never been in a war, obviously, but because I look like this. But, like, what I, yeah, I, I'm not, like, I, I don't care. Like, whatever. It's a fictional story they're telling. It's a weird, it's a weird pull to, like, take something that's actually called the highway of death that we were the bad guys in and put it in there and make us not the bad guys, but I'm gonna whatever. play. I'm going to play it. And I'll come back to you with it. Well, yeah, because I, I don't have an informed take it. I just think it's, I just think it's a bit... Rich coming from Russia complaining That's about the other thing. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, fine. I want your report, all right. I mean, I know how pro Russia everyone is these days, right? As Americans, we're all supposed to be Russia is great, but the administration says that. I yeah, think. yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, that's right. I mean, the president says that Russia is brilliant. We're all supposed to love Russia. So I'm sorry if I'm like go, going this? against the patriotic how far, grain how far, there. How many days removed are we from Trump tweeting about this? Ooh, that's a good point. Somebody getting in his ear about it and be like, I got it. He's tweeting about fucking Kanye albums. He can tweet about this. Yeah. Yeah, someone gets on the. You better, you better, you know, now, Comrade Donald, you better complain about this on the Twitter or re- we'll release the pictures. Because you know they've got fucking pictures on Oh, I know guy. they do. Nothing else makes sense. <laughs> Number three on the Roper Report the PlayStation 4 is now the second best selling console of all time. What? This is from Behind PlayStation. the PlayStation 2, no doubt. Correct. Don't spoil it. Uh, this is the from the Q2 results. There's a bunch of stuff that's about to drop for you guys, all from Q2 results. So just that's what's happening. Financials are happening. Everyone's Calls doing their happening. Q2 earnings. So over on Twitter, Nibel, of course, another analyst, had this to say Sony reports that PlayStation 4 has sold 102.8 million units as of September 30th, which makes it the second best selling home console of all time. The numbers look like like this number one is the ps2 with 155 million number two playstation 402.8 million uh number three playstation one 102.49 million number four the wii 101.63 million and number five the ps3 with 87.4 so million. sony has the top three spots and four of the top five yeah that's pretty that's dominance yeah it's that thing a lot of people i saw i think it was Lucy O'Brien comment on this uh, on Twitter the other day of like today I learned kind of thing of like the you know 360 dominated that generation but by the end PlayStation 3 was able to come out and sell more units I remember I'm beyond talking about it and watching the chase I wonder how far you have to go down that list before an Xbox shows up I think number five, six you think yeah kind of you're wrong right 360 was yeah. right there because it was neck and neck with PS3 yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Slid in there. yeah um during this is an interesting thing Nibel calls out during uh, the earnings call Sony mentioned that after the Insomniac acquisition they are going to quote Continue to pursue growth investment opportunities to enhance content IP, implying possible future studio acquisitions. Mr. Witta, the question I have for you. Look, let me just tell you, Greg, as a gamer, hearing that kind of sexy gamer talk, continue to pursue growth investment opportunities to enhance content IP. Like, that, just, that just gets me wet as a gamer oh geek. Oh my god, as a we're nerd, we're I'm like, talk rock dirty hard to me. Over here. Enhance that content IP, you dirty bitch. <laughs> I'm going to need a fucking safe word. This is so hot. I know, right? Oh, my God. New content. I can't see. Who are they going to acquire next? What content IP are they going to enhance? 
What what vertical integration opportunities will they maximize next? I can't wait for it. Oh. I, I need I like expanded universes. I want them to turn all my IP into properties all over, and Kevin. stuff. Might need some of those me undies. I might have jizzed in my <laughs> well, me undies yeah, with well, all this sure. yeah, yeah, gamer yeah. talk. Well, you can get yeah, they're comfortable. They have micromodal fabric. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you can't uh, do you think uh, PlayStation Four is going to catch PS Two? Um, well, it's got a long to way to go, hasn't it? And yeah. it's at the end of its generation. Yeah, it's, no, it's, it's got a year to go. Yeah. The question is: it, the only thing would happen is like if they put out another hundred dollar PS4 when PS5 hits, and then I mean, you know, I would I would need to see actually where they were at, you know, this, uh, you know, a kind of like for like where they were in the life cycle. Yeah, got to remember PS2 continued to be, a, you know, a, 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 a very popular machine and continued to sell long after the PS3 came out. The question is. Um, what kind of life will I mean PS4 has got a bigger bigger you know, the other interesting factor is it surpassed just barely but surpassed the PlayStation 1 mm-hmm. um, you know over its lifetime and um, you know the, play, the PlayStation 4 will continue to be supported and we'll probably get we'll probably see like a 199 version so you know they'll, they'll shrink it down oh yeah they'll get it in they'll continue it'll yeah. become like the budget option for a while and again there's, there's such an installed base that the big boys will continue to uh, support it for uh, you know a few more years um, will it will it will it ultimately beat PlayStation 2 my guess is no it's, it, would, it would have a long way to go I the PlayStation so. 2 I, it was phenomenal untouchable uh, real quick too from Wikipedia uh, who submitted this to uh, nanobiologist tossing the Wikipedia list. Uh, Xbox 360 right behind PS3 with uh, about 84 million. Okay, <clears throat> okay. Worth pointing out too, because this is the including um, handhelds. That right. if, we, if we brought handhelds into the conversation, because again, this is home consoles, it would go PS2, Nintendo DS, Game Boy slash Game Boy Color, PS4. Man, play, I mean, again, if you look at the history of it, though, I know it's obviously been covered historically, you know, um, ad infinitum, history. but we do love history here on uh, Kind of Funny Games Daily. And to go from 155 million PlayStation 2 to be, to just a little bit over half that on the next generation, that would that, that was a real, <laughs> historically, that was a big Well, remember, I mean, when we were in, back when we were in the PS3, 360 era it was the idea that okay cool next generation is going to be the end of it we'll have one more console generation and then we'll start to move into what? a unified platform or whatever the fuck's gonna happen what? what year did the ps3 come out at? ps3 yeah two don't don't you're wrong because i can get it i can go back through my timeline 2006 that was, that was, that was gonna be my guess yeah 2006 I think that, like, wait the yeah list. no wait yes because it was i graduated college and started at the tribune in 2005 and that's when the Xbox 360 came out, and they had a year lead on PS3, yeah, it's so it's 2006. Yeah. And then I got hired in 2007. Um, do you guys think that the recession like plays a part into this? In in what? In that, um, like, would the numbers have been more solid if we didn't have like what six years? Oh, because like 2008. Yeah. I mean, I, I, yeah, but I also think that Sony. Cause, I mean, made what? a lot of major mistakes with that in the same way that, that Microsoft made a lot of major mistakes this generation yeah. with the Xbox One. You know, the six the six hundred dollar price point. Six hundred. You know, re- recession or not, that's too much money. Yeah, I feel like we're in a different place with tech too, if that makes sense. Like I think we, we I mean, you think back to where we are, like in that PS3 360 generation, right? The fr- when I came to IGN and Craig Harris got the first iPhone I'd ever seen with my own uh, mm-hmm. ever, like. I remember I didn't when three. I'm a. I'm you know my life is video games. I knew from the fourth grade I wanted to write about video games, talk about video games. When I'm graduating college, I'm not motivated to buy a 360 in any stretch of the imagination because I don't have. I didn't have internet in my apartment and I didn't have an HDTV. When PS3 dropped, it was the same thing. Of it's 590 US dollars and I don't have an HDTV. And why would I play that? I was I had the Wii, uh, you know, dirt cheap off of it comparatively. I was playing games on my giant tube TV that way. I feel like we've. It, it's night and so day. So even I feel you, tight. even you, ultimate PlayStation stand, Greg Miller, passed on the PlayStation Three. Dude, like that's the thing people always want to fucking shit on me about. All right, oh, you're a Sony pony. Go back and listen to the first two years of Beyond when I was like, Jeremy Dunn was like, and what are you playing PS3 at home? I'm like, no, I want to buy that thing. Thing's way too expensive. Are you kidding me? No, I would never do that. I would never get out there and do that kind of thing. And that was the thing. They had no games. They had all these different things. There was a million reasons it didn't work. Now we're in a much different place. Yeah, Night I mean, day. you know, they they arguably squandered a lot of the goodwill that they had from coming out of the PlayStation Two. Arguably, some arrogance, uh, but they bounced right back. The PlayStation Four is terrific. They got they got it right this time. Do you think it's going to happen again with PlayStation Five and uh, Scarlet? You think the title turn Xbox runs away with next generation or gets first and next generation? No, I mean, the, you know, the na- narratives aren't as simple as that, are they? Oh well, you know, it was it was Sony's turn this time, Hubris. so it was Microsoft's yeah. turns next time. Um, I think you know we we know almost nothing about. 
We know we know a bit about PlayStation. It's going to be the I said this before. It's going to be the same all over again. PlayStation Five is going to be a more powerful PlayStation Four. Sure. Scarlet's going to be a more powerful be a more powerful Xbox One. I don't think either of these consoles have like any great like jaw dropping surprises like game changers. You know, it's yeah. going to be the same shit. Well, yeah, and that's where we're at, right? Is like it's all incremental. You're going to see the continued advancement of graphics, how many characters can be on screen, and how many things can It's going to come down to, in the same way it does with the big streaming wars that we're all about to get the into. streaming wars. Begun these streaming wars have. Um, is the services. And I got to say, I tweeted about this a couple of times last week. I, I finally, I don't know what it is, I finally started like really delving into it. And maybe it's because a couple of really good games are coming on it lately. And people have been caring, like, comparing like what the good values in gaming are. Sure. Um, Game Pass is terrific. Yeah. Does Sony does Sony have anything as good as that? They have PlayStation Now. Is that but is that as good as Game Pass? No, I don't think so. It's more successful, but I, I, they're just starting to put like you know more modern stuff on there, right? There's a big deal the other day when we were talking about God of War getting added to it, right. a, a, a litany of other games, right? I think they're you know prepping for that war. I think you're you're right that it is services that'll I think win who has the best games and who has the best deals on those games? Yeah, in terms of the. The, the the you know whether it be cl- whether it be X Cloud or whatever Sony's version of that is going to be yeah. um, you know the the box the hardware and again and, and don't forget you're going to have Stadia Stadia is arguably a platform in this next generation that's coming along yeah we'll see you know and and Stadia's whole thing is the box doesn't matter you don't even need a box yeah so it's less about what's the box and more about what 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 are we going to be doing with it it's you know with these massive content wars are going on right now with apple and disney and hbo and netflix and amazon it's gonna it's gonna be the same thing again when you when you watch tv at home when you watch netflix you know it's nice to have a 4k tv but you're not really thinking about the hardware that you're watching it on you know this the same services are on every box and it's going to be it's going to be the same here it's going to be it's going to come down to what games do you want to play that that and and, and how much do you want to pay for those games it's it's not going to be about well I, I, I think the argument about we've got the better hardware is is going to go away because I don't think it's that compelling. Xbox has got the better uh, hardware this year, but it's not helping them. I don't necessarily think that's true. I think that like there are certain people who definitely care about where they're watching what content. Where it's like, I know when it comes to me, like if if I'm watching something and I really care uh, like for it to look good, I have to make sure that like. I do it through the TV's Netflix app. Yeah, the native app on the, the TV. The native yeah. app because that one's the one that like uh, like ingests the best. But if I don't care and like I want the my Hue lights to be synced with it, <laughs> I do it through uh, the Chromecast Ultra cuz like there is a dip in quality that is noticeable, but like I get to enjoy this these light show. You know? I never well, thought at all about any of that yeah. stuff until that final season of Game of Thrones when oh. I, we were watching on PlayStation 4. And me, Lucy, in, in general, watching it was just like, why is it? It's all artifact and garbage. Man, this sucks. Ha, ha, ha. And then like you looked at Twitter, and it was all the PlayStation 4 people being like, what the fuck? And everybody else being like, look fine for us. And I was like, oh, oh no. no. I mean, like no, I, no. I, I, I had a lot of the artifacting on HBO now. Yeah. I, I used uh, HBO Go. Uh, and I was watching that on the Apple TV box, I think. Worth pointing out, I got an email that pertains to this very conversation kind of in the future and where we're at. And me saying I'm always, oh, Mr. Digital, I, you know, I'm, I, I'm happy for the digital revolution. Got this email from Com- or Xfinity last night. You used 100% of your data plan this month. <laughs> That's why I kicked Comcast to the curb a That's long time ago. Sonic, I right? know, but Sonic doesn't have the crazy good stuff in my hood. That's yeah, a shame. but if you don't have the crazy. Do you have the crazy good stuff? I forget right what now? I have over there. But I think it's something weird. Like they couldn't. It was. It just wasn't. I'm good. just saying. If I, I understand what you're saying, but I'm saying if you can though. get a cheaper version yeah. of what you have now, and not necessarily <laughs> the fiber, like without limits, isn't that better? You poor Comcast bastards. You're all down there underneath. You're all down there below, and there's and then and they're like begging for data, and there's Immortan Joe. Immortan Comcast. Do not beg. Do not become dependent. Do not become addicted what, to what data. You, you will crave it. What? What do you have? What do I have? Sonic. Unlimited gig yeah, internet. Right. Unlo- no data caps. Nothing. That's what we're talking about, though. That's what we want. Like, I'm telling him to go that route. You have it too now? Or no? Yeah, but no, until no, it becomes available it. in his zip code, what can he, he can't do anything. But what I'm saying Comcast is, has got him over a barrel. That's why they're able to treat him like shit, because he's got if, nowhere to go. If he has 250 down and... 30 up, probably. I assume that's what nah, you nah, have. No, no, something like that, yeah. It's whatever we used to have for the, kind of funny. The, the, I never changed after the speed. Yeah. The point is he gets capped. They capped him. They said he's used all his data. I'm on your side, Gary. I'm telling him to switch over. 
But he can't because he's not in his zip code yet. No, so no, com- they're in my zip code. They just don't have the crazy good stuff. They got this. They were like, we they don't have, have the. But I, I think yeah. it's probably still better than Comcast. Any opportunity to tell Comcast the to fuck, fuck off, yeah, you should take off. it. All right, cool. Uh, let me just say to you, by the way, I'm really enjoying the show, guys. I'm enjoying us just having a couple. Who knows? Who knows? Big just, news. We're like, we're like just three old men. Let's check. Let's check. Let's see other. what. Let's see what Greg's got available. No, no. Right I already now. did this when when we said we could get it for the studio. I uh, w- I did this exact same thing and it said no, but then I talked to the guy and the guy's like, it doesn't have the crazy good stuff, but it's got the other stuff. You need to call. And that's when I was like, oh man, but I just don't Get the good time. stuff. Get I on the Sonic time. bandwagon and then when the crazy stuff rolls around, you'll get it. All right. Well, you know what, Gary? We don't have all the free time in the world like you to go eat fluffy pancakes. All right. Some of us have to keep doing shows. Uh, next, it's not all great news for PlayStation 4 though. This is still just bullet point on three, by the way. James Bachelor, Games Industry Biz reports. Sales for the game and network services division were down by... $878.5 million, or 17% year-on-year year, uh, for the first three months ended September 30th, 2019. Operating income was down $235 million, or 28%. Uh, the de- this decline was attributed to a decrease in both software and hardware sales, although Sony notes an increase in sales for PlayStation Plus subscribers. Uh, the service had 36.9 million subscribers at the end of Q2, up from 34.3 million for the same period last year, and the 36. Point two million from the previous quarter. So games and services is down. Do you it, would, would you attribute that just to this being the end well, of the generation? Well, games and network services, yeah, hundred percent. People aren't buying games because yeah. they're they're waiting. I think it's, and I think we, we were just talking about this before. It's a weird year. What's game of the year? I don't know. There's a bunch of great games. Where the, is there one amazing standout game? Everybody's shouting out a different game right now at their car. Yeah, it's interesting because we were talking before the show. You said, like you, you made. The, I said to you like, what do you think is going to be game of the year? Because we're at that point in the year now where like all the candidates mm. are basically. It seems there. like the only one we can all agree on is Resident Evil Two. It seems like that's the one everybody's like, yeah, yeah it was really good. but that like, was really how, good. I know, but like, does does how much is the fact that it is a remake count against it? I don't know. Like the, we we'll talked about out. Link's Awakening as well, another yeah. remake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then it's what Outer Worlds, Outer Worlds, Outer Worlds, Jedi. I mean, so Jedi Fallen Order will see. I hope so. Man. Death Stranding will we we'll, we'll know on Friday. Yeah, we'll know, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but you're right. It's a, the, the game of the year picture. I mean, it's a, I think Goose Games in the conversation. Um, but it's gonna be. It's, I think this year. It's, I think you're gonna see. Um, most people last year went uh, God of War. Yeah. Usually there's one. Usually there's like a consensus winner. Yeah. I think you may not see that this year. I we'll think you, may, I think you may see uh, the because there's certain there's what like fucking five hundred different game of the year awards out there. Sure, maybe ten or twelve that actually mean anything. Um, and that? I think what's that? No, no, of course are, we, not. are we one of them? You're not even no. in the five hundred. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> but I host the dice and we vote on the game awards, so we're kind of in two of them. You sure, know what I mean? Sure. We're kind of in two You're of them. A lot of sense. Uh, number four on the Roper Report. I got some EA stuff from their their Q2 call. It's about Star Wars. It's about Dragon Age and more. Uh, we'll start with Daniel Ahmad. EA confirms that Star Wars Battlefront 1 and 2 have sold over 33 million copies combined. EA is expecting Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order to ship between 6 and 8 million units before March 31st, 2020, the end of fiscal year 20. Interesting news there for me personally. Interesting the how they, they combine the battlefield, the battlefront one yeah. and two. Like they don't totally. want you to know how much was yeah. each. No, no, they're just doing fine. Yeah. Everything's doing fine with the battlefront. Don't worry about us. But more interesting, Fallen Order. Are you excited for Fallen Order? Are you going to play Fallen Order? I know you don't really like Star Wars. You just took the paycheck. <laughs> Is it true your first draft called uh, the Death Star, the Millennium Falcon? Because I read that on the internet. <laughs> so for Fallen Order. I can't, I can't. I don't know. It's weird. I should. I should be more excited, right? Because I like Star Wars. Maybe I don't know. I might. I, I might actually be. This is a weird thing for for me to say, but I might be. I might be experiencing a little bit of Star Wars fatigue right wow. now. There's just so much of it out there. I kind of, you know, it's feast or famine. I almost, almost kind of preferred it when it was famine. Yeah. When each piece of Star Wars that came out was like, oh my god, we've waited so long, and it was sure. a big deal. Sure. Now there's something new every five minutes. Sure. And again, for I think for a certain kind of Star Wars fan that just wants like. To like once that all you can eat buffet, yeah, that's great. I I don't know. I'm I I, I kind of want to like I want I kind of want to order more of like the a la carte menu. Like, I can't fucking wait for Fallen Order. Playing but you, so you, I, I mean, I trust you because you played a bunch. Just of like it. two hours, two three hours of it. Yeah, I yeah. have no doubt that the, the I I I'll, I'll I'll definitely get it. I'll get it on. I'll, I'll get the PC version because I want to play the best version <laughs> yeah. you know available. Um, <laughs> I want the highest frame rates. I want trilinear bit blopping. You want to see Cal's hair blow. Yeah, every, I want every, ray tracing. Voxel, yeah, I want 120 yeah. frames a second. Mm-hmm. I want 4K. I want all those things. All of those things that you'll get probably around the PlayStation 7 or 8, I want, I, I want it now. And I can have it now. 
because I've made those choices. Fallen Order is going to be great, I hope. I'm sure it is. I look forward to, to hitting things with a lightsaber uh, in 4K. Rebecca Valentine over at gamesindustry.biz pulled this uh, for her roundup of the Q2 stuff. She was talking about how total net revenue of uh, $1.35 billion is up 4.7% year over year. To that, uh, there was a whole bunch of different conversations, including this one from Blake Jorgensen, uh, COO and CFO. Uh, the strong results... The strong results this quarter illustrate the power of our live services in our core franchises. Strength in Ultimate Team, of uh, The Sims 4, and FIFA Online, uh, FIFA Online geez, drove live services performance above our expectations. Looking ahead, we are doubling down on live services combined with our core franchises. We're investing in games that people play for longer and engage with more deeply. This focus will continue to drive growth and profitability for the company through the remainder of this year and beyond beyond interesting ea of course hated just everybody hates ea as you know gary interesting as they look to the future and they try to see the success of how can we take more of the ultimate team stuff for madden and fifa how can we take those online services and put them into the core franchises and bring that in what does that you know define to them obviously i think one of the the big things people are excited for for jedi fallen order is hey it's a single player star wars game with no microtransactions no you know bs from what they've said we'll see if that hangs true uh going forward we'll be interested to see what that means what, for a battlefront for a thing how are they going to continue to double down on what they have and still do this and not be even more hated i don't have the answers i mean they're making the money what do they care exactly you know what i mean that's what you always talk about uh however this is it daniel again back on his twitter said this ea says that new dragon age says that new dragon age from bioware is in development but likely won't be until after fiscal year 2020 or i'm sorry Fiscal year 2022. So after April 2022. A new Star Wars title in development that should drop prior to the end of fiscal year 2022. I think I might know what that is. Tell us right now. <laughs> How did you find out? <laughs> did you write on it? Did you help? Did you just see somebody? This is you can't do that. You can't say you think well, you know what the I game can, is. I can. I just did it. I, Han Solo I, I, I think I, I think I know what it is. Jedi I'm not, not going to tell you anything. Boo. Is it Boo. The, I know, right? Boo. Is it here's what I want. Is it like is it like Overcooked, but it's Maz Kanata? That's what I want. Oh, I, w I would play that. Yeah, right? You're a piece of garbo. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> back to Daniel's thing about this uh, new Star Wars title and plus the uh, uh, Dragon Age thing. I should note that the above was given somewhat offhand, so I wouldn't put too much stock in the specificity of them. But that seems to be the years being guided towards. So there you go. Interesting. Frank Furter writes in to Patreon.com slash games and says, Good morning, Tim and Gary. I was originally going to have Tim host with you, but I was like, you know what? I got to see Gary. EA subtly dropped the news that we are a minimum two, year, two and a half years away from the next Dragon Age game. With the original Dragon Age 4 scrapped to focus on Anthem and Bioware losing a key producer in September, can we hit the panic button? If this is going to be a game that needs to live up to the brand name Dragon Age, is another two years enough time to finish it? Or do we have faith that Bioware has this under control and will be able to produce a great game in a beloved franchise? Also, food for thought, another Star Wars game is in the works and is going to be released by March 2022, uh, which gives me pause that they are going to be rushing out a game instead of giving it the polish they probably will need. We well, first of all, on the Star Wars thing, there's no way to know if the date means it's being rushed because you have no idea how long it's been in development. For. Right, we don't know who's working on it either. Yeah, they could have been in teams. development for five years and they're right. just talking about it now. So I, n n not enough information there. Gary says niet again. Niet, niet, comrade. Uh, <laughs> on um, Dragon Age 4... Feels like a lot rests on that for Bioware because Bioware's name, 100 much like Bethesda's right now, is just in the trash. Sure. And oh, you didn't sign up to be a Fallout first member. <laughs> I liked. How, I really, really appreciated your tweet the other day. I, like, it's funny. I've it's never true. fucking played this game, but it's I can't so, it, stop I, watching. I don't know what it videos. is. I don't know what it is. Like I've never, I've never, I'm not really a Fallout guy. Yeah. I've never, really? I never played Fallout Four. I don't think I even played Fallout. I think Fallout Two was the last one I ever oh played. Oh my god! Okay. I just never played those games. I know that they're very well liked. And I and I know that Bethesda is a company that has always had like a blue chip, you know, top shelf reputation. But Fallout, ever since Fallout seventy six first came out, I've just been fascinated with like how a company can do get it all wrong to that extent. <laughs> like it's it's one of those car crash things that you can't look you away can't from. Look away from it, yeah. And the Fallout first thing is just like I I don't like I, said, I usually stay away from like snark and negative commentary, but I've been watching all of the 
Angry Joe, Yong Yi video yeah, uh, yeah. with people they just they're, they're like they're just going on about it well, every it's, day. It's, I can't get in. I don't know what it is. I can't get enough of it. Well, it's it's just a gawker delay. You're looking That's at your window because it's it like is. How I'm, many, rub, I'm rubbernecking. How many rakes can be in Bethesda's front lawn? I know, <laughs> right? He's stepping on them all. <sighs> And it, building the rakes and then stepping. I know on they're that. literally. I, I mean, they're know. literally. They're, they're, they're deliberately walking into these rakes. Um, to so this one about so, Bioware, though. But well, so who knows what's next? For Bethesda's in deep trouble. I don't know what they're going to do to get out of that hole. But Bioware, at least, and, they, and obviously with Anthem, they have a similar fuck up, and there's still a lot of ill will about them about them disgracing the Mass Effect franchise as they did. Yeah, Andromeda. But going back to. Dragon Age, which is one of their two core, like you know, th this is what we're known yeah, for, yeah. A, a, ret a retrenchment, if you will. What? Uh, a retrenchment. A retrenchment. <laughs> You're doing this so to go back. To to, to go to go backwards. Okay. Yes. Uh, <laughs> He's so smart. Look at him. <laughs> oh, I have a thesaurus. I have a thesaurus because I need to talk about fucking Death Stars. He could have just said sabers. go backwards, you know? Uh, step back. Are uh, 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 going backwards, if you will, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> they've gone backwards. Yeah. And uh, and they, they've retreated to a safe haven of, of a beloved franchise. But that in its way carries its own risk because that they cannot fuck up. They fucked up. Their, they fucked up their last fran their, their, one of their two main franchises. They fucked up their big attempts to move forward with something new. Yeah, this is all they've got left. They cannot fuck this up. And I feel like they know that, and I feel like EA knows that. Right. I feel like they looked at Andromeda and they're like, man, we made you rush that out, huh? We fucked up there, okay. And then they look at Anthem and like, oh my god, do you you have to if you want Bioware to still be a name that matters, they have to fucking crush Dragon Age. Do you think that the that they're likely to play it safe because they just don't want to fuck it up? What do you mean by play it safe? I, I like not, I not, try get... to, not try to do anything too new or innovative or like a new direction for the franchise, but like just give people spaghetti and meatballs. Like just <laughs> you like Dragon Age? Here's some more fucking Dragon yeah, Age. Yeah, here it is with all the yeah. voxels. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, you're probably right. I think there'll be new systems in it and stuff. But right. Dragon Age, I mean, uh, has a has, you know a, a game uh, it does switch up a lot in a lot of ways. Uh -huh. It's a great RPG every time with great stories and great you know personal relationships. But mechanic wise, from Dragon Age to Dragon Age Two to Dragon Age Inquisition, those were all. Different feeling. I just wish it had been done the other. I wish they had fucked up Dragon Age, which I don't care about, and now putting we're putting all their chips in on Mass Effect because I'm, I'm a Mass Effect guy. Yeah, Mass Effect was fun. Mass Effect Two was my favorite game, probably tied with Red Dead, was my favorite game of that generation. Hell yeah! And I desperately, desperately want a new Mass Effect. I don't want Did Andromeda. You play Andromeda. No, but I, I was so excited about it. If you just said to me like around the time of Mass Effect Three, when I was like fighting the Reapers, and I was so, I actually liked Mass Effect Three a lot. I know it got some shit, but I really liked it. Um, if you'd have said to me, if you'd, if you'd like come to come to me from the future and say, I mean, you know, looking much, this is what kind of future Greg would look like to me, <laughs> Step, stepping out of the time portal and saying, yeah, yeah. guess what, Gary, I'm from five years in the future. The new Mass Effect game is out and you don't give a shit about it. I'm like, how could that be possible? Yeah. Well, EA showed us the way. Yeah. I hear, uh, I, 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 Outside of the problems, I had liked the little bits of Andromeda that I played, but it was that I had so many fucking problems. I heard once they got past the game, it was pretty okay. I think if they had continued to support it and make it better, I'd, I'd be like, what does it look like now? But I think they just did the initial patches just to fix it, yeah. and then just walked away well, from I mean, it. I mean, it doesn't need anything else, right? You were never going to play the multiplayer. I know. Should I, is, it worth, is it worth me picking up Andy, Mass Effect Andromeda? You liked Ma Mass Effect Andromeda. With thoughts on that? I only put like five hours in. Did you ever want to go back to it, though? Yes, especially with that big HD remaster. Okay. Oh, or or they, they put it on 4K on, on 1X. You ever oh, they back? did? Yeah. I've, I've got the PlayStation version. Fuck. I, I'm thinking of going back to do, like, just because I think it's one of my favorite franchises ever, and I just don't know. I'm like, probably getting it for, like, five bucks. Yeah. My cool. wife, Leah, Leah, just picked up The Witcher 3 for 12 bucks what on a Halloween yeah. sale. She got it on Switch, huh? What I a vat. No, she got so it on Xbox One X. Huh? I was put down by all the hate. Yeah. yeah. Me well, too. It, it had a lot of problems. Me too. All the, all the, neg all the negativity put me off. Yeah. And he's fucking looking like Tony no, Stark don't over say there. That. Is that a deliberate thing? Is that what you're no, going he's for? No, he just got new glasses. It's you funny. look like Tony Stark. I love that. Number five in the Rupert Report. Oh, this is a fun one. It's an easy one. Go on. Ninja Theory's Inside Project. This happened yesterday, but I couldn't, didn't have time to fit it in. However, I'm reading from the Xbox Wire where Dom Matthews, director at Ninja Theory, had this to say. Today, we are proud to announce the Inside Project, an innovative R&D project at Ninja Theory that we have grand ambitions for. 
In 2017, Ninja Theory released Hellblade, Senua's Sacrifice on PlayStation and PC platforms, and later on Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and VR. Uh, the game received universal acclaim for its depiction of a warrior with severe mental health issues and was described by Welcome as the best representation of psychosis in any media. It went on to win widespread acclaim, including five BAFTAs, three Game Awards, and a Royal College of Psychiatrists Award. Oh, wow. Subsequent to its release, uh, the creators of it have continued discussions on how games can go beyond uh, representing mental illness and distress and how they play a role in promoting mental health or mental well-being. These discussions have resulted in the Insight Project, an ambitious combination of technology, game design, and clinical neuroscience brought together with the aim of generating strategies to alleviate mental distress. The Insight Project will take shape over several years, but is being announced early to encourage an open and transparent approach to its development. It is an exploratory and experimentally guided program project that aims to deliver a mainstream solution to help treat mental suffering and encourage mental well-being. I thought that was cool. I like that they found such claim with that, and they got so much uh, press for it and coverage for it that they're like, "We're going to double down on this and try to." Make I I, I applaud that. It's, that sounds great. We we need more of that. One hundred percent, Gary. I can't wait to see what the Insight Project finds, but their findings are still so far away. If I wanted something more immediate, say what came to the mom and grab shop. Where would I go? The official list of upcoming software across each and every platform, as listed by the kind of funny games daily show hosts each and every weekday. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Before I, already I get see to the one list. title on here that interests well, me. Well, you can keep looking. Before I get to the list, I'm going to give you the sponsors for today's episode. We're going to start with Escape the Invasion. Ever wonder what you'd do if you found yourself in the middle of a post apocalyptic world that's been ravaged by a deadly virus inflicted by aliens? Looking for a unique date or game night that gets you off your devices and truly interacting with others? You've got to check out this game called Escape the Invasion. It's all about immersive experiences, and they just announced the launch of their new post apocalyptic themed subscription box. For the makers of Hunt a Killer, a game that Jen and I play, the popular true crime uh, mystery subscription game comes Escape the Invasion, the sci-fi game where you are a sur survivor on a rapidly dying Earth after an alien invasion. You find refuge in a government bunker, but is it safer than the outside world? Can you trust your fellow survivors? You think you're safe now that you've found refuge, but there's a council that creates and controls every aspect of life in the bunker. What will you choose? Freedom or safety? With Escape the Invasion, you will receive a box of clues, physical items, and evidence each month. It's up to you to piece it all together, solve the mystery, and save humanity. Not everything is, it's, as, is as it seems in this challenging game, where you must decide who to trust. Your decision will determine the fate of the story, the bunker, and maybe even humanity itself. It's been called an escape room delivered to your front door where Fallout meets Alien. Escape the Invasion is a great way to get out there and hang out with people, but if you want a solo adventure, you can interact with our online community to swap theories and help others out. You get high-quality, handcrafted clues that get you lost in this post-apocalyptic world and make you feel like humanity truly is in your hands. Right now, just for our listeners, you can go to escapetheinvasion.com slash kfgames, get 20% off your first box. That's escapetheinvasion.com slash kfgames for 20% off your first box. Escapetheinvasion.com slash kfgames. Can you survive the alien apocalypse? I cannot. Up next is Quip. We're all using Quip here, but Why? Why? It's the best toothbrush out there. But what makes a better toothbrush? Industrial strength power, claims of miraculous trendy ingredients, multiple modes. If you ask a dentist, they'll tell you it's less about the brush and more about how you use it. That's why Quip was created by dentists and product designers to focus on what actually matters for your oral health, healthier habits. Quip's sensitive vibrations with a two, built-in two-minute timer guide gentle brushing for the dentist recommended two minutes in 30 se with 30-second pulses, ensuring it even clean. Quip automatically delivers brush heads to you every three months for clean new bristles right on schedule. Mine are on the way right now. I got that email alongside the one that my internet's out. Uh, the sleek, intuitive design is simple to use and comes with a travel cap that doubles as a mirror mount. These thoughtful features make brushing something you actually want to do twice a day. Good habits matter to live a healthier life, so help Form fresh oral health habits with Quip. Quip starts at just $25, and you'll get your first refill free at getquip.com slash KF. This is a simple way to support the show and start brushing better, but you have to go to getquip com slash KF to get your first refill free. Right now, getquip.com slash KF. Gary, out today. Xeno Crisis, Xbox One. Inferno, 2 Plus, Xbox One. Spaceland on Switch. Air on PC. I will eat you on PC. Incredible Dracula, the Ice Kingdom on PC. 
and Pixel Zoo on PC. Which one interests you? Say what you like about PC games. Uh-huh. We do get we do have the best titles. No, you don't. This is just a, you went Incredible a Dracula. Random name generator. The Ice I will Kingdom. eat you. I will eat you. Is Let's check out I will eat you. Can you pull that one, Kevin? Yep. Give me a second. No what problem. do you think that is? I think it's going to be I'm a monster, monster and I'm side eating, scroller like monster. I'm a kaiju monster and yeah, I'm eating exactly. people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah, Rampage exactly. kind of thing. Yeah, I kind of envision like the original uh, Drinkbox Blob game, Tales from Space of Battle Blob, right? Yeah. I feel like it could be a cooking game. Sure. I think it could be food getting revenge. We're a sandwich and we're going to eat people. I think we are the things that are eat. We, eat. we are the ones that are eating. I want to know, Kevin. What's going on? He's working on it. I'm working on it. Sorry. He's okay. got 15 other tabs. KFA. Apps, That's uh, a lot audience. of tabs. At KFAF, you know how they do it. They have a bunch of different. Oh, those things. are all their tabs that are all. Yeah, you know how they got set it. up for later. They, okay. To KFA, if they rely on magic tricks out here to entertain people, you and me, we come it's out. Just, we just make oh, it happen. Okay, okay, here we go. Wait. I. I mean, I'm having well, trouble finding it. No, that's four years you. old. Doom exe. I will eat you, Cookie. Oh, you see, this is this is this what, the problem with their name. They, they have not. They have not. They have not. They do not have good SEO. No. They have very poor SEO. Very poor. Yeah, just try that. I will eat you PC. Yeah, I yeah. eating my computer screen. Well, maybe we should just watch that. Oh man, here I'm sending it to you, Kev. Is we were all wrong, Gary. What? It's not what we thought it was. I'm sending it to Control. How, Kevin. What did you Google to find it? I will. I googled. I will eat you video game. Okay. Huh. Your Google Foo is strong. And then, I, then of course that brought me to uh, the one and only Steam. Okay. Right, let's I will check eat it out. you. Run, hide, sh- run, hide, shout, and try to survive in the game. Full of fun and funny moments. Play with random players or with friends. But whatever you do, do not enter the den of the beast. What is, oh, I, what is going on? I mean, the game looks pretty. Okay, here, here goes See, this guy. Running. He's running. Uh, this is fucking selling me on I Will Eat, you guys. What is going on here? Oh, is it getting chased by a fucking bear? Look at this Look guy. At you know, like Fucking a release console, you cowards! What is going on? <laughs> is it like an asymmetric it's thing? It's a multiplayer where tr- thing where we're all running from the bear and trying it's not so to get it's, So it's like it's like Friday the Thirteenth or Predator or whatever. Well, I don't but know if anybody's playing. Can as you the play bear? as the bear? I don't know. So it sounds like it's like hide and seek, and like once you get caught, you're out. You know. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah, I'm enjoying this trailer. I, I want to know. Beat, I want to know more. I mean, I don't feel like the trailer's telling us anything. But what a jam! I, I like this. I like the soundtrack. I'm really worried it's gonna cause. I will eat you. Have fun with friends. Have only fun on with Steam. friends only on Steam. Music by Ross. Ross Bagdasarian. Ross, don't don't Look clean this, this guy. Video. Walla walla bing bang. Ooh ee ooh ah uh, ah. Uh, so I, I, the, the the trailer didn't explain to me fully what it is, but it has it, it's done, it's done what any trailer needs to do. You're excited. It's, it's, it's you want to know more? I'm I want to know trying more. To find it. Game space. I'm excited energy. and I want to know more. Man, not only is their name hold on, I will run hide game. and shout. And try to survive in the game, full of fun and funny moments. Play with random players or with that. friends. But whatever you do, do not enter the den of the beast. Okay. Yeah. There's another trailer. Gary, Tri- you love PC games. You need to buy this and play it for us. All right? I'm going to get I'm it. Saying. I'm going to get it. New dates it's for It's an you. early access. All Remnant right. from the Ashes has sold more than a million units to celebrate on Thursday, October 31st. The game will release new in-game content and rewards that will enhance players' experience, including one of the most requested asks by fans, Hardcore Mode. This new mode will challenge players to complete the game with only one life. In addition, the Remnant from the Ashes team teased that they're excited. more DLC is coming throughout 2020. Did you ever play that? Did no, what is that? it? Remnant from the Ashes? No, what is it? It's, uh, it's the... Um, I'm right, it's the... Uh, you run around... Uh, I can't... It, uh, Fran played it. Yeah, it was the weird one where... Uh, Remnant from the Ashes is an action role-playing game, third-person shooter. It was this weird game that like kind of looked like... Uh, it was like Monster Hunter and Bloodborne kind of all in this one thing. You're fighting giant shit, running around fighting it and shooting it and whatever. No, must have mm-hmm. that one passed. It was by. one that was popular. I remember slept on like that one. Uh, and then tonight, you're get a uh, new date for you. Tonight, uh, GT Sport Patch 1.45 adds the Porsche Taycan and Spa French Champ. Franck Rochon. Enjoy all that, you weird car people. Deals of the day for you. Xbox's November games with gold are as follows. Sherlock Holmes, The Devil's Daughter, uh, is going to be available November 1st through the 30th. Then The Final Station will be available November 16th through December 15th. Star Wars <laughs> Jedi Starfighter is going to be available See November. See all the old Star Wars games are coming back? Oh, yeah, of course. November 1 like, Darth, to isn't the like Jedi Knight is on Switch now and now all the old prequel. People they love need Star to, Wars. You know what they need to You're bring back? You're the only back. person who's sick of Star Wars. You know what they need to bring back? Bounty Hunter. 
Pod racer, motherfucker. Oh, get out of here. Pod ra- we used to have cash money races in PC Gamer. Pod racer, the, the, the pod racer game yeah. was the best thing that came out of the prequel That's era. True. That's true. By I mean, far. That was big game. It was fantastic. Ca- cash in his hand. Oh, and we had a big jar yeah. of like of like creased up five dollar bills that went oh, in yeah. there. Five dollar bills. Yeah, because like every time they were going I, 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 it, was, it was big no, it was big money. They're like the dot com era is never gonna kill us. <laughs> That's right. That's right. This dream will never end. We're invincible. <laughs> uh, then Joyride Turbo is available November 16th through the 30th, Xbox One and Xbox 360. Uh, that J- Starfighter was Xbox One and Xbox 360 as well. The other two were Xbox were One. Were there any other prequel games that came out that were any? Pod- uh, Pod- uh, Jedi brilliant. Power Battles. Jedi Power Battles? Yeah, I remember that. No. What was that? That was... Am I uh, the, the, the name one? rings a bell. That was the PS1 one, right? I li- I, there was one on PS1 that I liked a lot. Where you, Monsters of Terrace Cassie? Pain in the ass. It wasn't it. Uh, PlayStation Plus, your November games are Neo and Outlast 2. Oof. Yeah, slim pickings. Well, Neo, people love. I know, but it's not a lot. Of, but if you don't like it, there's nothing November else. Game, you know what I mean? Well, I want to get one question in from Reader Man. Remember, you can be part of the show, patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames. Now let's go here. Chad writes in and says, Happy Widow Wednesday, Tim and Gary. Now that EA Access and EA Games have been brought to Steam, do you think Microsoft is eyeing the situation and trying to work out how they can get Game Pass on Steam as well? Probably not. Yeah, I don't think so. They're going to stick with their own thing. Yeah, right. It's successful. Everybody loves them. Everybody's applauding it. You th- imagine the numbers are really good because I will. Like I will say this: that it's not on the PC side. It's not super easy to figure out how to get on Game Pass really? or get access to your games. Yeah, because there's like an Xbox app. But then there's like a store app, and it's all, it's all very confusing. Like I have game I have Game Pass Ultimate, which is good on PC as well. Yeah. But in terms of figuring out like how to actually find the games and install them, like it's it, it's not as it's super intuitive. Easy. Yeah, yeah, it's not as easy as like some of these other stores. Yeah, I think the whole origin thing is because origin wasn't being used in EA. Saw like we're talking about like with the soft numbers for Battlefront on origin right they want to make sure they're selling as many units to make themselves it's look in, good it's, to Disney, it's so interesting well to see at, at a time that, that, that epic and activision and bethesda and rockstar are all out there making their own stores ea it's more of a retrenchment back i know that word now back kevin's fine. oh no he's woke up there you go <laughs> Kevin's like, he's like, like what? <laughs> rising from the dead retrenchment <laughs> um uh they've they've, they've 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 abandoned that Everyone has their own outlets, but EA, arguably the biggest player well, I mean, in the game. Don't And think about it this way, too. You saw EA back off and go to Steam now, and you also saw yesterday PlayStation close down PlayStation View. Right. Like, it's about, and again, we're talking about these Q2 calls, these earnings calls, right? Yeah. It's about, all right, cool, dollars and cents. This isn't yeah. part of the core EA, business. EA has made so many mistakes lately. They cannot afford to make any move that means that people might buy fewer of their games. They have, they have to at least... Put their shitty games on a service that is in front of as many people as possible. Exactly, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. We're starting with the Fallen Order. Again, all signs point to that being good. I hope I don't get burned. Uh, Jake writes in with the final question of the day. Yo, KFGD crew. Guys, there are too many good games out, and a lot more are coming down the pipe. How do you guys avoid the stress of getting to everything you want to play? At the moment, Call of Duty is taking up much of my time, and I feel bad for not finishing up games I've started. Not a good time to start Final Fantasy VII and V either. Anyway, hope you guys and the best friends have a good Halloween. I mean, it's it's a real problem this year, every time of year, isn't it? Because everybody wants to release their games the for, the ho- of for the holiday season, and so once you get into this September, October, November time frame, you know all the, all the big games come out at once, yeah. and it sucks because you know a lot of people can't afford to buy all those games. They've got to make some hard choices, yeah. and even if we can afford to buy all the games, then it becomes a, I, 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 I I might have more money than the next guy, but I don't have any more time. Yeah, I've probably got less time. Yeah. Than, than a lot of people. And so my, my backlog is piling up. I'm finally going to start Modern Warfare tonight. Good. Twitch.tv slash Gary Uh I'm out of worlds. I haven't had a chance to play yet. Uh, After Party just came out. I installed that yesterday. And it's also on Game Pass. I haven't yeah. had a chance to play that. Death Stranding right around the corner. Uh, Jedi Death, Stra- right Death Stranding, the corner. Jedi Fall. All, all around I'm going to want to play all these games. There's at least not so much time in the day. Um, like last weekend, I sat. I, I had not, still not yet finished Goose Game. And I sat down last Sunday and said, I'm going to finish this fucking game. Like, one game this year, I'm actually going to play all the way to the end and finish it. And I did. But it almost, as much as I love that game, and it's great, it almost felt more like a chore because it was like, I just, I've got to finish something. I hate I've got that. to, I hate I've got to play that, something all the way to the end. But yeah, how do we, you know. You don't. I feel bad about it all the time. I look at my cross media bar, I turn on my PlayStation, live area, sit on PlayStation, look at all the stuff. I look at my Switch, 
like Witcher's on there. I'm like, man, I'd love to, but I'm still playing Luigi's Mansion. I'm still playing this. I got to get to yeah, that. Luigi's Mansion. I'm excited. It never ends. Yeah. That's coming out tomorrow. It's heartbreaker. Who has the time? Who has the time, Kevin? Nobody. It's time to squad up. This is where one of you writes into patreon.com slash kind of funny games. Give me your name, username, platform of choice, and why you need help in a video game. I read it here. The best friends come and find you, and everybody plays games together. Today, Steve needs help on his PlayStation 4. His PSN is Steve X 418 I have one trophy left to earn in Team Sonic Racing, and it involves beating a friend's time trial. If any best friends would like to help me get the Platinum Trophy, my PSN ID is SteveX418. If you want to help out Steve, get that Sonic Racing Platinum Trophy. Hit him up, SteveX418. Gary, we ask people watching live on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames to go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight. Um, nanobiologist says Gary said Yong Ye, but his YouTube is Yong. No, you said Yong Ye. I said Yong Ye. It's probably Yong Ye. Yong Ye. Yong Ye. Okay. Well, I met Yong. I met him at the Metal Gear Solid Five review event. Very nice. I'm a relatively new uh, follower of Yong Ye's. I do enjoy his uh, nightly. Uh, rants. Yeah. <laughs> he's, had, um, he's had a lot to rant about lately. Greg from Edmonton, this isn't a you're wrong, but it's interesting I hadn't heard about. EA is also probably not keen on keeping Bioware around as our new provincial government in Alberta is canceling the video game development tax credit put in by the previous government to try and diversify our economy. It was a significant credit that helped out developers here. That stinks. A lot yeah. of great developers are up in Canada. There's a big old boom because of that. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Kebab says, No Man's Sky got a patch today that I missed. 2.15 that adds weekend community challenges. Um, Nanobiologist says, I missed a new date. Uh, Apex Legends Duo mode is coming out for a limited time starting on November 5th. Oh, okay. So you just play with two instead of three players? Is that yeah. what duo mode sounds, is? That, sounds right to me. So that's, that would be my guess. Sense to me too. I don't know. And then also Nanobiologist says, uh, Some Xbox game passes are on Steam, like Halo Master Chief Collection. Nanobiologist, you're a piece of garbage. You know exactly what he meant when he said it. Don't try to come in with that kind of garbage, all right? That's me knocking it out. You insulted me today, and you insulted the show, and you insulted your fine lineage as being a your wrong contributor. I want you to think about it tonight. Tomorrow, I'm hosting the show. Halloween. With Imran on Halloween. Is Imran going to be in a costume? I didn't tell him to, so we'll see. Am I going to be in a costume? What would yes. be a good costume for Imran? He's little. Yeah, I'm trying. Yeah, that, that's something to say, I guess. Yeah. He can, I mean, that's how Halloween. You can be whatever you want. You don't have to, like... <laughs> it's not like a height requirement, like a <laughs> roller know, coaster. You know, you know, <laughs> he goes in the costume shop, and the guy's like, oh, man, I can't you know, tell you, you know that. What, you know what popped into my head right away? Is it going to be super insulting? <laughs> no. Okay. I don't know why it's the first thing that popped into my head, but I think he'd make a really good Pikmin. Oh, okay. Just like oh. a little flower around Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why not? Imran, I know you watch the show usually. If you can come tomorrow and How Pikmin quickly costume. can you put together a Pikmin? What are you doing for Halloween? What are you dressing up Mr. as? Mr. Incredible. Oh, oh man. Okay. Is the, is the whole family thing? Uh, no, it's just me. Oh, My okay. daughter is going to be Penny Parker from Into the Spider-Verse. Ah, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. What's Leah doing? Uh, I think she's got like a sloth costume. Huh, okay. Like a big, big fluffy, big furry onesie kind okay. of thing. Okay, okay. And I'm going to be Mr. Incredible. Nice, Which fits okay. me because you know, kind of, I'm I am like a balding, you know, uh, round, you know, a little bit thick around the middle, middle aged man. I, I fit that perfectly. Crushed it, and I got a good, I got a a, a good costume for it at Target. Okay. Uh, so I'm, yeah, I'm gonna be Mr. Incredible tomorrow. Okay. I'm gonna go to my kids' school, and they they love it when I dress up. Last year, my wife and I were Luigi and Mario, and the kids loved it. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. All right, cool. But you're not gonna reveal yours until not, tomorrow. Well, I'm gonna wear it on the show, so I don't want to. Okay. Do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But tomorrow is in your hands. Friday host is going to be Greg and Tim. Also remember, Friday, 12.01 a.m. Pacific time, youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames. We're putting up our Death Stranding review. Me, uh, Fran, Imran, Tim will be there as well. I'm sure everybody else who's played will chime in as well. So lots going on. Halloween Hellscape. Everyone's played Death Stranding but me. That's not exactly I'm true. not in the Death Stranding But I just know club. that you can't hold an embargo. I don't care about that, though. I only... Thank you, Gary. Are you not there either? No, he didn't want it. He, I asked him if he wanted a copy. Why, why didn't you want a copy? Because I'm not a Kojima guy. Fucking give it to me. What are you kidding? You, you got fucking desperate sitting around? It's just I can't trust you with an embargo. Of course I know. you can. No, I no. worked on Star Wars for five fucking and years. And now you don't even like Star Wars, you said. Secrets, but again, so. like I said, original script called the Death Star Millennium Falcon. Kathleen Kennedy had to be like, Gary, I don't think that's right. Listen, I don't care about fucking Kojima. I only care about one thing. Kevin knows what it is. <sighs> Screen cats. Screen cats. I'm fucking doing that. Screen cats. Until next there's time. No way, there's no way out of it. It's I'm not leaving until I see the redesigned logo. Just cut it. Just cut the show. We're not doing screen cats. Take your hand.